Ahoy, fellow Vita comrades, and welcome! Today we are, as per usual, catching up with all the latest Vita homebrew happenings, so without any further ado, let's dive right into it! Let's begin with the updates. First one is for Port of Gish by Isage to the version 1.2. In case you've been trying to run it before and you did face some crashes, those has been fixed and the game runs now perfectly fine. Just install the new VPK if you still have the old game files and if not, go and get them and then install new VPK and you are ready to rock and slide and jump and stick. The link is of course down below. Second, we got update for Baba Is You by Glint Wine to the version 1.3. Crashes have been fixed and Glow Shader has been added that is required after the level Fragile Existence. I haven't progressed that far into the game yet, but I have updated it anyway because we're always after the latest and greatest and I would recommend you do the same, you know, just in case. Third, we got update for Godot by Sonic Master and now we have available full Godot editor with included support for the PS Vita for your PC. This update is more useful for developers than for end users. Either way, it's a great step uh, that opens up a lot of doors with many unique possibilities. Great work and in case you don't want to miss these important updates and releases, click subscribe. Apollo Save Tool by Bucaner has been also updated and you can now manage not just PS Vita save files but PSP ones as well. More PS Vita and PSP cheat codes has been also added, plus many other fixes and improvements that you can see on the screen right now. Online database is also working fine. Now I want to quickly check out upcoming homebrew called Call of Vita Hexone by Vita Dev. It is still work in progress. Graphics looks very good. For now you cannot do much apart from roaming around, shooting and picking up packages. I've installed it also on my second Vita and I was able to connect both of them and play in one map together, which is amazing. I was trying the rebirth scenario. The other option Battle Royale is still work in progress. This homebrew is very promising and I'm looking forward to any new updates. Great work man, keep it up!
There has been also a new game ported to the Android by Dan Cooper and it is none other than our favorite Cuphead. It is still also a work in progress, but it's absolutely playable and you can try it right now over at his Discord. There has been even added gamepad support if you prefer it over touchscreen. I certainly do and it runs and plays and feels as a proper console experience, I'm impressed. Dan has confirmed it can now boot even on the Vita, but of course there are many crashes, errors and hard work to do before he can proceed further. Overall, amazing work brother, it is greatly appreciated. Now let's focus on the recent releases that has received significant updates, with the first one being Fallout. Many improvements added and many bugs fixed. Smoke now follows you, download the latest VPK and install to reap its benefits. Devolution aka Diablo has also received an update, go and get it for the best experience. There is now also even Zoom available, that would be also a great addition to the Fallout. RVGL version 1.2 added online multiplayer, but for now it's only possible to host from Vita. Also booting and loading times reduced by about 300%. Must have update. Death Road to Canada, another necessary update, many bugs fixed and improvements implemented. There has been also two smaller games released. First one is How to Rob a Gas Station by Potter Software. It is very short, about two minutes, with loading maybe three times as much. It is a first person kind of adventure game where you're trying to rob a gas station, as the name could imply. It's more about the 22 different endings than anything else. So if you want to experience its pixelated charm, go and get it for free from the link down below. And the second new game is called Crosscraft Classic by Indescence and Moto Legacy. It is a multi-platform project that aims to recreate Minecraft Java Edition Classic. It plays fine, but the controls don't utilize a second joystick, but rather it uses old PSP control scheme, which I still can't get used to. Last and the most exciting, we got news about upcoming Android ports, both from Glintwine. First is Port of Siberia, the adventure game. 
The in-game performance already looks pretty playable. And the second, the one that everybody is eagerly waiting for, the port of Dead Space Mobile. The performance looks more than satisfactory. For now only touch is supported, cause this game was made for mobile, with no proper physical button support implemented. Either way, I'm pumped. In my opinion, it's more than worth it even with touch support only. Mind-blowing progress, keep it up! If you enjoyed this content guys, consider joining, like, subscribe, check the links, check the discord, thanks to devs for the hard work, thanks to you for watching, thanks to members for support, you all have a good one and peace out.